ਵਾਜੂ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਜੂ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਕਾਲ ਚੈਨਲ ਪਾਲ ਜਾਲੀ ਅੱਜ ਅਸੀਂ ਪਾਕ ਐਵਨਿਊ ਹੈਵਲਕ ਰੋਡ ਤੇ ਪਹੁੰਚੇ ਗੁਰਦਰੇ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਿੰਘ ਸਭਾ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਕਿ ਆਪਣਾ ਲੇਬਰ ਲੀਡਰ ਜਰਮੀ ਕੋਬਨ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਸ਼ੈਡੋ ਚਾਂਸਲਰ ਜੌਨ ਮੈਕਡੋਨਲ ਇੱਥੇ ਪਹੁੰਚੇ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਨਾਲ ਆਪਣੇ ਸਿੱਖ ਫੋਰ ਲੇਬਰ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਸਾਰੇ ਇਕੱਠੇ ਹੋ ਕੇ ਪਹੁੰਚ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਟੂ ਡਿਸਕਸ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦੀ ਈਯੂ ਲੋਕਲ ਇਲੈਕਸ਼ਨਸ ਅਸੀਂ ਜਦੋਂ ਅੰਦਰ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਮੌਕਾ ਲੱਗਿਆ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਨ ਦਾ ਤੇ ਪਲੀਜ਼ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕੀ ਵਾਚਿੰਗ ਕਾਲ ਚੈਨਲ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਦਿਖਾਉਣ ਦੀ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਵਾਜ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਜ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਚਵਰ ਸ਼ਤਰ ਤਖਤ ਦੇ ਮਾਲਕ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਦੀ ਹਜ਼ੂਰੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਤਿ ਸਾਧ ਸੰਗਤ ਜੀ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਸਾਡੇ ਪਾਸ ਸਤਿਗੁਰੂ ਦੇ ਦਰਬਾਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਲੇਬਰ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਦੇ ਲੀਡਰ ਜਰਮੀ ਕੋਬਨ ਸ਼ਾਡੋ ਚਾਂਸਲਰ ਜੌਨ ਮੈਕਡੋਨਲ ਤੇ ਇਲਾਕੇ ਦੇ ਐਮਪੀਜ਼ ਜੀਐਲਏ ਮੈਂਬਰਸ ਕਾਉਂਸਲ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਉਹ ਪਹੁੰਚ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਹਨ ਸੱਚੀ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਦੇ ਦਰਬਾਰ ਵਿੱਚ so i'd like to start by welcoming the leader of the labor party jeremy corbin john mcdonnell uh, the shadow chancellor and the mp for our local constituency in my constituency hayes and harlington of course brinda sharma our local mp onkar sahotaji the gla member slim amlotaji from hounslow and countless other councillors who dedicate their lives in serving the local community so welcome to you all to city guru singh sabha south hall So we often get asked why we have events like this especially in the Gordara when politicians come and speak to us and we must remember in Sikhi the important principle of miri and biri biri being spiritual power which we all pr- practice personally when we come into the Satguru's darbar we all do our nitnam we all do our seva but at the same time the sixth guru shame patsha blessed us with the concept of miri that being temporal or political power So it's an integral integral part of our faith to be politically active to participate in society to influence policy and to make our nation and our world a better place. So these events enable exactly that. I know Jeremy has always taken time to listen to the Sikh community to understand the challenges we face and also works with us to make this country stronger and more importantly fairer. In 2019 we're facing a magnitude of issues, increasing division, rising inequality and general intolerance. 2019 also marks the 550th of Atar Parab the coming of Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji to this world so as sala pa sada sade 500 sala mana rahe hai Guru Nanak Dev Ji di is dhart te honda Guru Nanak Dev Ji aap kala aap narayan kala tar e jag mein parvare ho Guru Nanak Dev Ji was god on earth who came to save us all and Guru Nanak Dev Ji when he came he brought a social economic and political revolution to this world and those teachings those beliefs of guru nanak dev ji are needed today more than ever we tend to simplify the teachings of guru nanak dev ji into three simple sayings naam japna kirt karni and vand ke shakna i'm sure we've all heard that but if we develop those a little bit further it provides us with the mechanisms on the kind of economic model we need to aspire to an economy which is more equitable where every citizen has access to good education good health care and ability to make a decent living So I welcome the recent announcement of extending things like the real living wage to under 18s. It's exactly the kind of revolution we need. We're citizens of the fifth largest economy in the world. Uh, we're, we're fifth citizens of the fifth largest economy in the world don't need to rely on food banks to eat. We're children don't need to go to school in an empty stomach. Where people are able to earn a fair reward for the fruits of their labor. This is get the garden to earn an honest living. So working hard and equally getting fairly compensated. so you can run to kishak so you can share the fruits of your labor these are the core seek principles and they are more needed today than ever and this is exactly why more seeks need to be become involved and engaged in politics because we have so much to offer this world this is the meeri that guru har gobind sahib ji gave us this year also marks the 100th anniversary of the jallianwala bagh massacre and next month we'll be marking the 35th anniversary of the attack on Darbar Sahib and the genocide that took place in Delhi. And so we of course welcome the party's commitment to conduct an independent public inquiry into the government's vol- into the UK government's involvement at the time. So once again I'd like to welcome all the visitors who've come here today into the Darbar of the King of Kings Sri Guru Granth Sahib ji hun beinti karunge tan man ji Singh ji te si nu aa ke bas do comment sama dekhde do comment aap de vichar sar hun kan. ਸੰਗਤ ਜੀ ਰਸਨਾ ਪਵਿੱਤਰ ਕਰੋ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਅੱਜ ਮੈਂ ਚੰਦ ਅਲਫਾਜ਼ ਆਏ ਮੈਂ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਦੀ ਵਿਜਾਏ ਅ
First of all, uh, my sincere condolences to the Gurdwara president, our very dear Sagar Mail Singh Malli. Uh, I know he is not here today to once again welcome Jeremy and the Labour leadership to the Gurdwara uh, because his father has passed away and then hence that is why he's in India at the moment. Um, but uh, I know that uh, you know all of us would share those condolences uh, with him. But in terms of today, I'll get straight to the point in the sense that we all know that the labor movement has stood for the many on so many different occasions, whether it's in terms of equality, in terms of social justice, in terms of trying to stop the NHS from being more and more privatized through the back door, whether it's through making sure that our schools are adequately funded, whether it's to sh ensure that our council and our public services are adequately funded, and that those services are not made into some sort of easy councils or privatized affairs. Now, those are the things that the Labour Party has always stood for. But what is also wonderful to see, that under Jeremy's leadership, that you will know that on Sikh issues, again and again, it is the Labour Party that has stood shoulder to shoulder with the British and the global Sikh community. If we look at the fact that when we wanted, uh, during 1984, let's just rewind back just, just briefly. 1984, when the Darbar Sahib, the, uh, the Golden Temple was attacked, who was out there with placards? It was the likes of Jeremy and John, standing shoulder to shoulder with the, with the sea community. When it were, came down to now, when we're asking for an apology from the Prime Minister and the government for the 1919 Jalewala massacre, while we've got traversing in different directions from the Prime Minister, we've got an unequivocal statement from Jeremy and the leadership to say that we want a full apology. And if it is a Labour government, we will be giving that apology. Now, while we welcome the likes of uh, Laura, it's great to see you here, and obviously uh, amongst so many other parliamentarians, Seema, uh, Malhotra, Varinder Sharma, uh, John, I've already mentioned, who's a, a, who needs no introduction, b being a, a long-standing friend of the Sikh community, whether it's Claude Moray's uh, MEP, uh, Julian Bell, who's a local council leader here, uh, as well as I can see um, uh, Dr. Ankar Singh Sahota, who is obviously uh, the only Sikh member of the Greater London Assembly, uh, and that happens to be, once again, uh, a Labour member. Uh, there are so many councillors uh, and also Claude Murray as, as the member of European Parliament. But I think the key reason, and this is the third time, it's almost like deja vu for me, the third time that I'm standing on a Gurdwara platform talking today, whether it was in two uh, Slough Gurdwaras this morning within my constituency, and that was for the fact that we've got the likes of Nina and others standing in the European Parliament elections. Those are very important because unlike before, where it was Labour versus Conservative, this is no longer about the major parties, it has literally become a battle between Labour and the far right. So if you, as good people, do not go out to vote on Thursday, what you will see is the likes of UKIP, Tommy Robinson, the Brexit Party and others dictating the agenda and making the agenda more far right, more Islamophobic, more anti-immigrant, more anti-minority community. So that is why it is very, very important that we mobilize everybody to go out and vote on Thursday so that we get the only Sikh MEP in the entire continent, Nina Gill, re-elected, as well as our ones here in London in the southeast and others. And with those few words, and given the tugging on my, uh, uh, the, uh, on my uh, blazer and everything else, once again, I thank the, the Gurdwara Committee uh, for their good service to the community and once again for having uh, allowed me to address the gathering. I have given you some advice to the Gurdwara Committee. Wahiguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Wahiguru Ji Ki Fateh. Wahiguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Wahiguru Ji Ki Fateh. Tanwa, Tanwa Ji Singh Te Sida. Hon Saadhe Paas, Nina Gale, who seeks for labor, so I have an online event organized here, so I will be able to do it. Wahiguru Ji Ka Khalsa. मैं सब तो पहला जड़ी गुरुद्वारे दी प्रबंधक कमेटी है, उन्हों दे बहुत तनवाद कर दिए हैं कि उन्होंने मेनु आहा थोड़े दर्शन करने दा मौका देता हैगा। ठीक है? It's working. So मेरा I'm just thanking the गुरुद्वारा प्रबंधक कमेटी for 
helping organize today and giving us the opportunity to meet with the Sangat here today. And I think I especially thanks to the president of uh, uh, the Gurdwara, Samraji, as well as Harmeet Singh Gill, um, for organizing this at very, very short notice. And it is really wonderful to see so many of you here, and especially my colleagues who have come from far, um, especially Tam Desi, uh, a very short notice, and Seema Malhotra from not so far, but of course, we're delighted to be in your constituency, Varindra, and as well of uh, Onkar Sahota as the GLA member. I know there are countless councillors here from, um, from Ealing as well as from Hounslow and other parts uh, of London. I am actually elected in the West Midlands and I was very proud to be the first ever Sikh Punjabi elected back in 99. That makes me very old, but I'm delighted to be here. And, and we set up Sikhs for Labour almost 10 years ago. And one of the reasons why we set up Sikhs for Labour was we were uh, fearing that we were losing the connection that has always been there between the Sikh community and the Labour Party, because we share so many of the values on equality, on social justice, and, and this is why we feel that Labour is a natural party for the Sikh community. I have great pleasure now to invite John McDonnell, our Shadow Chancellor, to say a few words before Jeremy. And just, as I said, John, you've been a great friend, and we know that the, some of the innovative and progressive policies you have been putting forward will really benefit the Sikh community up and down this region, but also people here in Southall. Vaheguruji ka khalsa, Vaheguruji ki fateh. Bhopo Danwad for inviting us today. I'm very, very grateful. I usually start in a few words in Punjabi, and some of you may know I, at the opening of the um, Kuru Nanak School in my constituency, which was a huge breakthrough. But the reason we're here, we brought along we brought along our labor team. And 45 years ago, 40 years ago, I, I came to this Gurdwara and we had a consultation in the community and it was about uh, the representation of the Sikh community at every political level. And at that point in time, we were winning seats for councillors. And yes, uh, we had representation in this area, in my area, it was a real struggle, but we got there and around the country. But what we said was, is we need a team in parliament. Well, now we've got that team. We've worked hard and we will build. Exactly as Nina said, we need to build it more, but we've got them and they're here. And they're a team of men and women who've worked tremendously hard on behalf of the Sikh community. Why? Because all those years ago, you taught me that the principles under Sikhi, Seva in particular, yes, and Miri, those principles are the principles upon which not just the Sikh religion were founded, but also the Labour Party were founded. Principles of equality, of fairness, of serving the rest of community, not about selfish individualism, but about working for others. That's the principles of Sikhism that I learned here. That's what I learned when the Guru Granth Sahib was recited in front of us. Those principles, I think, established the representation that we now have from the Sikh community in Parliament, the principles upon which we've been working. I'll pass control back again, okay? Wahi Guruji Ka Khalsa, Wahi Guruji Ki Fateh. Wahi Guruji Ka Khalsa, Wahi Guruji Ki Fateh. Saat Sangha Ji, hun minu baut khushi hagi hai ke mein leader of the Labour Party nu thonu darshan karan da mokka dinni hagi hai. Te thonu saare nu pata hega bhi another track record saare naalo agge hega jado when it comes to fighting discrimination when it comes to standing up for human rights, Jeremy has a track record second to none. And we're very proud, as I said earlier, to have had so much support as Sikhs for Labour from Jeremy and the team. And I hope that very soon he will be the Prime Minister of this country. Wahi Guruji Ka Kalasa, Wahi Guruji Ki Fateh. Thank you very much for inviting me here today, and thank you, Nina, for everything that you just said. 
there's a lot I'd like to say, but I know you don't want me to go on forever, which I could. <laughs> First of all, to thank you, Nina, for chairing Sikhs for Labour. The work you've done to ensure that Sikhs for Labour are centre stage in the party, and the way in which you've kept me and my team fully informed of all the issues facing the Sikh community and ensured that we respond to those concerns. And that we're determined to do. I lead a party of half a million members that represents all the wonderful diversity and mosaic of our country. And I'm very, very proud of that. Our public representation must also represent the diversity and mosaic of our country. And that we're ensuring actually happens. So that when we go into government, we lead a government that truly, truly is in tune with the diversity of our country. It's not a weakness, it's a strength. It's nothing to apologize for, it's something to be very proud of. And I'm very proud of the diversity of our party. I thank Tanja Desai for the work that he's done being the first turban Sikh to come into parliament, who always knows how to intervene on my speech at exactly the moment that I want him to intervene, and then he comes in with a question I wasn't expecting. <laughs> but he's absolutely wonderful, and his work with the homeless and the people of, um, of Slough is legendary, and I thank him for his work. The issues facing the community are obviously huge. Going back to the days when uh, turban Sikh men were told they had to take their turbans off to work on building sites, in buses, or anywhere else, it's the campaign for the right to wear them and the role in which local government has played in ensuring that that recognition is there. Those campaigns were successful because many of us were proud to live in a multicultural, multiracial society. But there are huge issues. The appalling atrocity in 1919 in Amritsar, now 100 years on. When the Prime Minister started speaking about it at Prime Minister's Question Time, I'm sitting opposite her thinking, at last, at last. Tangent sitting behind me, John sitting alongside me. I was there, at last, we're going to get what the British government must do. We didn't. We got some words that fell well short of the apology that is required. And so immediately, on behalf of the Labour Party, I issued that apology, but I want us to be in government to issue it on behalf of the United Kingdom as a whole, and we will do just that. You have to go into these things in order to ensure justice in the future. And there's quite a long list of things that need to be inquired into, and we will absolutely be doing that. But it's also about recognition of the community. That's been achieved in so many ways, you think, of Gurdwaras all around the country and the incredible work done in Gurdwaras. That community principle of feeding those that need to be fed. The numbers of homeless people all around this country who get food because there is a Gurdwara nearby. Those that donate food to the Gurdwara to make sure that others may eat. It's a very good principle. Actually, I don't want to live in a country that relies on food banks and donations, but I do want to live in a country where people care for each other. The Sikh community cares not just for each other, but cares for all the other communities as well, and I thank you for that. But it is about recognition, and the discussions about the census are very important, and we'll take a full part in those because a census means there is recognition of a particular community, therefore recognition of the needs of that community, therefore hopefully sufficient funding to the local authorities in those areas to meet those needs of all of those communities. That is what sensible politics is about, and the Labour Party is determined to put all those issues forward. These elections on Thursday, Yes, there are elections to the European Parliament in many ways. People weren't expecting these elections, but we've got them and we're contesting them. We're contesting them because we want Labour candidates to be elected, and there are a number of them here with us today who we want to see elected. But we're also putting forward a view on Europe. 
which Seema pointed out, is unique amongst all the political parties. I do not judge people on how they voted in 2016. What I do is make a judgment on what we as a country must do. That means understanding why people voted in the different directions they did, and I've said this so many times. You might live in Southall and vote Remain. You might have problems on universal credit, on schools, all kinds of things you might have problems on because of government underfunding, but you voted to remain in the EU. Move yourself to Stoke-on-Trent, you also have the same problems of underfunding of local government, of education needs, of housing needs and all those, but you may well have voted to leave the EU. At the end of the day, your interests are actually the same in bringing about social justice across our society. And so, we've approached this whole issue since the referendum of recognising and respecting the result of negotiating with the EU insofar as we can from opposition, but also engaging in talks with the government in order to ensure that whatever comes out of this, there is a customs union with the European Union, there is a trade relationship, and there's crucially protection of all those rights which Claude and Nina and our other friends in the European Parliament have fought so hard to achieve and get. And at the conclusion of all that, hopefully Parliament will agree on something and we'll then get that into negotiation with the EU. That could then be the subject of a popular vote to decide the direction we go forward, to bring the country together to protect jobs, to protect rights, and not turn us into some kind of offshore shoot of Donald Trump's America where our National Health Service is handed over to American healthcare companies and our rights at work, our right to clean food, our right to clean water are all diminished because we're making way for the interests of people promoted by Trump and his allies. I'm determined that we'll carry on with that. And so, in this election, we have tried to bring people together on that message. Yesterday, I was in Liverpool in the Northwest. Indeed, I was in the Northwest earlier this week as well, and I've been all over the country in this election campaign as I travel all the time. There's something deeply disturbing and very dangerous happening. When Farage and his friends travel around the country promoting a uh, no-deal exit from the European Union without ever explaining what that means, without ever explaining the consequences for manufacturing industry, for jobs, for supply chains, for travel, for students, for people, for individuals, European nationals who've gratefully, to our, from our point of view, made their homes in this country and made such an amazing contribution to our society. Never, ever explaining what no deal would mean, the chaos that would come as a result of it. And in his case, a subliminal message, message about diversity within our society, his obsession with the fact there's a majority of non-white people living in one ward in Oldham, in Greater Manchester. Why does he decide to give that so much prominence? And then across the Northwest, you have another candidate, Stephen Yaxley Lennon, I'm not prepared to call him by his stage name, and uh, I read what they'd put out. The language with which they described the Muslim community, translate that back into the language used against Jewish people in Europe in the 1920s and 30s, it is no different. A society that blames minorities for the problems that are perceived across society is a society that has a problem. We could go all around the country picking on minorities in different communities and blaming them for the doctor's waiting list, blaming them for the school sizes, blaming them for the housing list, blaming them for litter on the streets, blaming them for all kinds of things. And you could probably get a bit of traction on that. You could get a real sense of spirit of hate going. But at the end of it, would you have built a school? Would you have trained a nurse? Would you have trained a doctor? Would you have achieved anything other than diminution of the values, the human values of all of us. I don't believe in tolerance. I believe in respect for people. 
I don't tolerate other people. I respect other people. And our society is made the stronger by our diversity. What I was proud of yesterday was we were there in Derby Park in Bootle, in Merseyside in Liverpool, huge crowd there, and they came out because they are determined that their representatives in the Northwest will be Labour representatives, but they'll be representatives of the entire community, and they won't allow the poison of racism to divide us. Because the way we defeat that is by all the things we believe in. We believe in a national health service free at the point of use, as the good doctor explained to us earlier. Indeed, I've visited his surgery to learn more about his work. But we also do it by our pledge of a national education service which will take the commodity out of education and insert the right to education. That we persuaded Parliament to declare a climate and environmental emergency because there is one and we've all got to address it. Not by benefiting the rich, but ensuring that the poorest children in the poorest communities don't breathe the foulest air, that all our children breathe sweet, clean air and drink clean water. Not just in this country, but all over the world. And for a Labour government that will work with friends and colleagues, not just across Europe, but across the world, for that world where we respect human rights and peace, where we respect our environment and we recognise that societies that are deeply unequal and a world that's deeply unequal is not a world at peace or at peace with itself. That's what the Labour message is. And so, whatever others say about us, let's be proud of what we are as a party, proud of our diversity and proud of our determination to conquer inequality, not just in this society but around the world. And I'll conclude with this. The right to vote was won by people standing up and indeed dying for the right to vote in this country throughout the 18th and 19th century. The right for women to vote was won by very brave women who again stood up to be counted and won that great battle at the time of the First World War. The Human Rights Act came much later as again a culmination of the demands of so many people for justice within our society. All the rights we have and all the rights we enjoy came from popular culture and popular action. What you do in Gurdwaras, what the Sikh faith gives us, is that wonderful sense of justice, peace, equality and inclusivity. And to me, we learn much from all our faiths. <laughs> we learn much from what everybody is able to teach us. And that is what makes us strong as a people, strong as a society, and I'm very proud to lead a party that's determined to achieve all of that and throughout all the difficulties bring people together for a solution that works for all so that we do have the social justice that our party was created to achieve. Wahiguru ke Khalsa, Wahiguru ke Fatah. It's been a pleasure and a privilege to be here in Southall this afternoon, talking with and supporting our community, indicating how a Labour government would work with the Sikh community in the future, and the way the Gurdwaras feed the hungry, support the homeless, and help the underprivileged. That's our mission in life, and that's our mission for a Labour government all around the world. <laughs>